What's going on guys? In front of me, I have my 2023 Nissan Frontier SV. And today we're gonna be installing a rear differential vent relocation kit. I ended up purchasing all these parts off Amazon individually. You can go to certain websites and they will sell this all together, but it tends to be a little bit more expensive whenever you buy the kit. Being I purchased this stuff individually, I bought all this from Amazon. It was shipped to my house the next day and it was also significantly cheaper than buying the kit through a different website. All in all, all this stuff cost me right around $20 to do, and I expect this is only gonna take around 10 minutes or so to actually install. So let's go over what I got here. So this right here is about 10 feet of quarter inch fuel line, and it came with the clamps. This is gonna be more than enough for what I need. I think all in all, I'm probably gonna only need to use about four feet of this fuel line, so if you want to buy less fuel line, you can save a little bit more money there. But I use this on a ton of other stuff, so I figured I could use the extra. The next thing is this Dorman differential vent. The part number is right there, and I will be posting the part numbers for this stuff in the description. And we have this piece here. So this is actually a OEM Toyota part number, and this is the part that's actually going to screw into our differential. And lastly, I just got some black zip ties. These will help blend in with the frame, and you won't even know that they're there. Next up are the tools required to get this job done. So I have my ratchet here, I have a 10 millimeter socket, and I have a 14 millimeter socket. And then I have these pair of dykes just to cut the zip ties. You could use scissors or something else. And then over here, I have a couple things that I'm gonna use, and this is just gonna make my life a little bit easier, not only to get this job done, but also to record this video. So I have my creeper, and then I have a set of ramps just to give me some more clearance underneath this truck because it does sit a little low. So the reason I'm doing this is because these OEM vents sit pretty low to the ground and they're known to collect dirt, dust, and debris. They eventually clog up and then these axle seals will blow out. Installing this kit is just some cheap insurance and it'll help protect my axle seals. What I see most people do whenever they run this hose is they run it up from this axle over and into this rear tail light. So that's gonna be a nice, dry, clean place for this thing to breathe through. To get started, I'm gonna pull my truck up on these ramps just so we have some more clearance. So this thing right here is the vent we're gonna be removing. I'm gonna go ahead and start removing it. So I just popped this OEM vent and take a look at that. My truck only has about 20,000 miles on and there's already a ton of rust, corrosion, and dirt in there. And this thing was probably almost clogged. I'm gonna go ahead and get this new nipple installed. I did apply a little bit of thread locker to it. This probably isn't needed, but I figured I'd rather do it to be safe than sorry. So while I'm tightening this, one thing I want to point out is you don't want to tighten this thing crazy tight. You just want to snug this thing in there and that'll be good enough. That's probably about good right there. Next, let's go ahead and remove this right rear tail light. So these are two just 10 millimeter bolts and I'm going to pop those out. I'm gonna go ahead and just pull this tail light straight out. It shouldn't take much force to remove. So I actually ended up removing the rear tail light completely and just setting it there. There's a quick disconnect right here and these things actually ended up popping out easier than I thought. So I went ahead and just totally removed it. As you can see with this tail light removed, there is a ton of room to mount this new breather and it's nice and clean in there. So that's a good sign that this thing will be getting some clean air. I have my hose here. This one's, this hose is definitely longer than I'm gonna need. So I decided I'm gonna go ahead and feed it down from the top, root it the way I want it to go, and then I'll just cut off whatever's left over. But there's a nice hole right here that I'm gonna put it through.
I put some of the extra hose through this hole here. That way it won't fall back down and I won't have to reroute it from the bottom. Just something to hold it. So I have the hose routed how I'd like it. I actually have it hooked up on this end and I'm just gonna pull all the extra out through that tail light hole. But there's plenty of things that I could zip tie it to along the way. And one thing I wanna note is if you look at all this stuff connected to this rear axle has some slack. And the reason that slack is there is so this axle can flex. So one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave some extra hose here. That way it's not pulling tight whenever this suspension is drooping down. I'm probably gonna zip tie it to maybe this brake line here. That way it's not gonna be interfering with the exhaust and melting. So I'm gonna go ahead, pull all this extra hose through. Then I'm gonna go back down and zip tie it where I'd liked it. So that way it'll stay in place. So I'm gonna have you underneath here one last time just to show you the final routing. I got it all zip tied how I'd like it. As you can see, I left a ton of slack, kind of followed that brake line and actually put a zip tie on there to keep it away from the exhaust. But I think that's enough slack and that shouldn't give us any issues. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this access hose. I think what I'm gonna do is zip tie it right to this, this support here and have that breather like right about there. And I think that'll look pretty good. So basically just something like that. So now that I have the hose cut to the length I want, I put my clamp on and I just got to slide this new vent breather on this hose. And put this clamp on. And my game plan is to zip tie it like right about there. So something like that's gonna work well. It doesn't look pretty, but nobody's gonna see this. It's gonna be behind this tail light anyways. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this zip tie. Now all that's left to do is to throw this tail light back in. Now I just gotta reconnect this tail light, push it back into place, and we will be done. There's two snaps on the back that you want to make sure you line up right. And then all you got to do is give it a nice little push. It shouldn't take much force to get that thing in there. The last step is just tightening down these two bolts. You don't want to go crazy tight with them. Just snug them down. You don't want these things to be stripped out. So one last thing before I go that I wanted to show you guys was I ended up purchasing 10 feet of this quarter inch hose and I have about three feet left. So I did end up using almost seven feet of that. So getting 10 feet is probably a good idea if you're gonna do this yourself. This thing's totally buttoned up and this process definitely is pretty easy. And if I were you, I would do it before your rear axle seals blow out. I just wanna thank you guys for watching. And if you found this video helpful, Please drop a like, comment, or consider subscribing.